I was going to say, Bo, stick with the front side fiber. I told you not to go too fast into their back tail. And now look. <laughs> That's why I don't ride. You see that slang? My cousin went to... Um, Australia, and brought them back a skateboard. And there was a driveway opposite our house. It's a set of flats, and it had a quite wide driveway and went down the bottom. And so you could turn into the bottom, and they had some poles there where you park cars. And I'd swerve around the poles on the board, and I'd go, Phew. do it all day. It became a problem, because my dad didn't, he thought it was stupid to skateboarding, you know? It was for kids. He wanted me to be a man. I guess the big picture was, there was a handful of skateboarders in New Zealand at that time. Like, there wasn't that many, you know? We used to skate along the side of the road and we'd get beer bottles thrown at us and they'd yell out, no, you nerds, fuck off home. And so we all had pretty good camaraderie because we're like, holy shit, there's another skateboarder, what's your name? And we'd all hang out and bro down. Back in the day, he was just an animal. He's just the most biggest nerd skateboarder. You're not getting girls if you're that type of skateboarder. I knew I was good because I could do all the tricks. There was only about five tricks at the start. So I saw some guys couldn't do it. You know, some of the, my bros who, who could tackle me on the field could hit sixes and shit, but they couldn't skateboard, you know, and I couldn't. I was like, yeah. And I was getting up to like 11 years old, and I was like, I'm only a few years away from being the best. And what other sport could, I would have to fight, I'd have to grow to be 21 years old to dominate as a man in another sport, but I can have it now when I'm only, when I'm a kid, you know. Claim it, stand on the throne and just go, that's right, you know. <laughs> Just this way someone does a lender tail, if they don't do it right, then you can just bag them all night and stuff. <laughs> the way they do their rail grinds and stuff, just, I don't know, you can just, you gotta know what you're talking about, and when you do it, it's real fun, you know, you just talk all night. My mentor, Gregor, was the hardest course skateboarder on, on earth, and the best, he just totally ruled. I didn't know how much until he went to America, kicked everyone's asses over there, then came home and told me that he kicked everyone's asses over there and said, you're going to as well. <laughs> he was like, you're on track, bro. Yeah, Lee would try a trick and Gregor was like, that's shit, do it again. You know, and like keep doing it until every, every trick that he was doing was done to absolute perfection, you know? And um, so that probably helped Lee as well. He had the best guy to learn from for sure, yeah. Gregor never really had his day in the sun. He won a couple of contests, got hurt, came back, that was it. He'd given up skating. He had to because he broke his leg. In those days, they didn't have the fancy operations like now. He was in a cast up to here for like nine months. And so he gave up. I couldn't believe it. I, we argued endlessly over that. He kind of tricked me. He said, I'm coming to Aussie. And I thought he would skate again because he's the best, you know. So he came and all he did was just teach me. It brings a tear to my eye, you know, that he went that far out of his way to see me through. I went to Aussie in 86, did that training, slayed everybody in Australia to absolute death. And that was cool because being the best rules, you know what I mean? I, if I'd gone to, straight to America, I would have been, some guys would have taken me out, you know, I would have had to work my way out. But I went there and there were some guys who were all right, but they weren't even anywhere near what, what we were doing. Thing, two things I think about is skateboarding and playing the guitar. It's striving to do the raddest things you can think of. It's thinking of things at night. You actually lie in bed and think of manoeuvres and movements. It's all I think about ever, 24 hours a day. Us going to America is like going over to a tennis club in America and playing with Roger Federer and Novak Djokovic. These are the these are the type of dudes we were skating against, you know, global superstar heroes, and we're all of a sudden like, oh my god. You know, here we are. Well, the first thing I did was kick down the door and say, you don't have to be from America to kick ass. No one ever in their first contest makes it into the top eight. It just doesn't happen. And I got in, the, I think I came sixth or something like that. Yeah! Just kill it, just kill it! Yeah! 
So within six months of Lee arriving in the US, he was signed with one of the biggest skateboard brands in the world. I was signing my contract for Vision, and Michael Hutchins came in, and I think he was signing a contract with him as well. Anthony Kiedis was in there doing things. And so, you know, I was like, yo, you know, this is it. I'm standing in the room, they're standing in the room. This is the room. Here's Lee Ralph, and he's skating against Tony Hawk and Steve Caballero and Christian Soy and, you know, the legends of skateboarding still today. Why he's revered is because he had a really high level of power, but also did it with a lot of grace and style. I wanted my skating to be rock solid, the most rock solid in the world, to the point where it's like a machine, but also with heaps of flair and humanity to it. I was straight edge, always straight edge. So never drinking, no drugs and nothing. A lot of the pros smoked weed and drank, drank heaps of piss and that, and they were easy to overtake. The time they're spending doing that, I'm hammering at the ramp all day, just getting better and better and better and better. Sometimes I'd be riding and just going like, you know, somebody stop me, because <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Shit, man, but we're it was shit, but you are getting there. <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was shit. <laughs> for you, you know, for you. For a lot of other people, that would be the highlight of their day. But... I was at my peak, just, I wasn't even at it, I was here. About that close to it and it was feeling good. Everything was on so good. Like my whole life had come, been aiming at it and it was on. Nothing could stop it. Then I went to Paris and did some demonstrations over there and I'm an amateur skater in America. You're not allowed to be pro because you have to have a green card. I went there as an amateur, so I didn't have a green card. Didn't bother getting one because that's how I roll. I, I never think of stuff like that. My sponsors didn't think of it too. So I went to Paris, came back and I got deported because they said I was making money, you know? And I didn't go back for 10 years, so. That was the end. I mean, Vision screwed it, mate. He would have had a career that would have got him. But, you know, he didn't care. He's never been bitter about it. And at the end of the day, sometimes, what did Malcolm McLaren say? Never let the public see the band. Never let them see them play. It was kind of like that, you know what I mean? He became an underground sort of hero. But in saying that, that's kind of a little bit of a... Yeah, it was just a waste, you know. He had a lot more to offer. When I was deported from America, I think I was 19. I went to Germany, then on and off between Australia. Come and see my mum. Stay in Australia with skaters. That was my lifestyle for maybe 10 years. And then I started drinking in that. Because I was depressed, you know. <laughs> yeah. And when Lee did start partying, he fucking took to it like a, a bull to red. That's all he can do, deny their, their depression, you know? You don't have any other. I didn't think I had other options, I was too stupid. So I should have just got, got a green card and gone back, you know? But no, that's how I roll. Lee was never, you know, oh, I want to be famous or this and that. He just wanted to skate. But I got, I got the taste of it, you know, and no regrets, no regrets, because it was so much fun. How could I complain? You know, it was mind bending. It's enough to sustain me through anything, you know, through whatever. The property that we're on right now is where I've moved to. Priorities have shifted a little bit because I'm not obsessed with skating anymore, but I'm absolutely obsessed with car, you know, that, and I'm lucky that I am. That's the other claim to fame that I've got because I went to America and on Māori and I kicked everyone's asses and no Māori had ever done that. Not even a Pākehā from New Zealand, which I don't consider lesser than me, 
but it hadn't happened. So really, you know, it's a win-win for me. Someone had to come through and represent, and you know, I got to be the one. So that was, that rules. <laughs> I'm helping here on the farm to keep the place going. I'm doing some work, which is, you know, almost, I have to do some work sometime in my life, so. Come on. You know, this is, a, this is on. one of the times. Nah. Because I'm Lee Ralph, yeah, come on. I haven't had to take one for the team that often in my life because people will step up for me. You know, they say, they say Lee Ralph, I will do that. It's, it's the time for me to do it, you know, and it makes it easier for me. I don't get all high at the moment. I walk around the farm and I'm pretty happy. You know, the guy's really cool that I work with, so he cuts me a lot of slack. I'm just getting electrocuted at every single fence. Like, he just can't, he can't believe it. He's like, I wonder if he'll ever learn, like... <laughs> While I'm holding the fence, I'm like, somebody stop me, Lane. <laughs> I'm farming too hard. <laughs> I'm out here rocking in the middle of Taranaki mainland. I'm here with the crew from I don't know where. I forgot to ask them their name, yeah. But we're here, we're here, we're everywhere. You're there, I'm here. Woo! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs>